Here we're going to look at a nice problem that was on the team selection test for the USA team for the International Math Olympiad. This was also suggested by a viewer. So let's go ahead and look at the statement. We want to find all non-negative integers a, b, c, and n. In other words, all natural numbers such that 2 to the a plus 3 to the b plus 5 to the c is equal to n factorial. So before we look at a solution, I'm going to give you guys a couple of hints. Maybe you can try this problem with those hints, and then we'll look at a solution. So my first hint is to find a few small solutions. So generally, whenever you've got some sort of equation like this that you're trying to solve over the natural numbers or over non-negative integers or so on and so forth, there are only going to be a handful of solutions, usually less than five. And so the first goal should be to find those solutions. And then the second goal should be to show that there are no solutions after a certain point. And here you're going to work with, reg with residues modulo something in order to prove that there are no large solutions. So that's my second hint. So maybe give this problem a go with the hints and then we'll come back with a solution. Okay, so hopefully those hints were helpful. Now we're ready to look for a solution. So the first thing that I want to do is observe the following inequality. That 2 to the a plus 3 to the b plus 5 to the c is always going to be bigger than or equal to 2 to the 0 plus 3 to the 0 plus 5 to the 0, given that a, b, and c are always bigger than or equal to 0. But notice that's going to be equal to 3. But now, notice that 3 is bigger than 1, which is equal to 1 factorial, which is equal to 0 factorial. And 3 is also bigger than 2, which is equal to 2 factorial. So that immediately tells us that we only have solutions for n bigger than or equal to 3. So we can't have n equal 1 or n equal 2. So that's a good place to start. And now we'll start looking for some of these small solutions. So we'll look at our first case, maybe when n equals 3. So notice when n equals 3, that's the same thing as saying n factorial equals 6. So we're looking for solutions when some power of 2 plus some power of 3 plus some power of 5 equals 6. So we've got to just play around with it, find a couple, and then argue that there are no more before moving on to n equals 4, and so on and so forth. So the first thing that I want to notice is if we take 2 to the 2, that's going to be equal to 4. And then if we add 3 to the 0 and 5 to the 0, we get 4 plus 1 plus 1, but that's equal to 6, but that's equal to 3 factorial. So we have found our first solution. And then we can look at this just a little bit longer and we see that we have another solution. And so we can have a solution 2 to the 1, so that's going to be equal to 2 plus 3 to the 1 plus 5 to the 0. So notice that is 2 plus 3 plus 1, but that's going to be 5 plus 1, which is 6, which is also 3 factorial. So again, we've got another solution there. And now we can maybe easily argue here that a, in other words, the power of 2 must be equal to 0, 1, or 2 in this case. And we know that it cannot be equal to 0, because if it were equal to 0, then the left-hand side would be odd, whereas the right-hand side would be even. So the only possible, va possible values for a are 1 and 2. And I might want to point out that's because we have 2 to the 3 is equal to 8, which is bigger than 3 factorial. Good. So we can't even get started if that a is bigger than 3. And so now we've got solutions for a equals 1 and 2, and now we just have to argue that those are the only solutions when a equals 1 and 2. So I'll let you guys maybe think about that, but you can do something similar to what we did here. So notice here the only possibility for b and c are both 0, because immediately we take something larger and we're bigger than 6, and then something similar happens down here in this equation as well. Okay, so now let's go on to our next case, which is when n equals 4. And when n equals 4, n factorial is equal to 24. Good. 
and there's one solution in this case as well and that's going to go like this so it's going to be 2 to the 4 so that's 16 plus 3 to the 1 plus 5 to the 1 so it's 16 plus 8 in other words, 16 plus 3 plus 5, which is equal to 24, which, like I said, is 4 factorial. Then we can make a similar argument that there are no more solutions to this equation either. Notice if we have 2 to the 5, that's 32. That's already too big. But then if we look for smaller uh, powers of 2, those won't work either. Just checking case by case. Okay, so we've got three solutions. We've got two solutions where we get three factorial and one where we get four factorial. Now, maybe I'll go ahead and clean this up and I'll show that these are actually the only solution. So we just got done arguing that we have three solutions for n equals three and four, and those are given by the quadruples. A, B, C, N is two, zero, zero, three, one, one, zero, three, or four, one, one, four. Now we want to prove the following claim, which will finish off the whole problem. And that is, we want to show that there are no solutions for n bigger than or equal to five. And we're going to do this by working modulo 5 factorial, in other words, modulo 120. Maybe first we'll go ahead and notice that if n is bigger than or equal to 5, then that means that n factorial is congruent to 0 mod 5 factorial, which is 120. It's because like 6 factorial is going to be a multiple of 5 factorial, and so on and so forth. Good. And now we want to take the following inspiration as a reason for making the following next step. And that is, notice that if we take 5 cubed, we get 125, but 125 is congruent to 5 mod 120. And notice that that tells us that if we look at the powers of 5 mod 120, we only get three possibilities. We get one, so that would be like 5 to the 0. We get 5 and we get 25. But if we cube it, we get 125, which is back to 5, which means if we take the fourth power, we're back to 25 and so on and so forth. So maybe we could put all of this together with the following um, observation maybe. And that is, if we look at all of the residues of 5 to the c mod 120, as c runs bigger than or equal to 0, we're only going to get three numbers. And those numbers will be 1, 5, or 25. Great. I'm going to go ahead and call that set capital C, kind of to be in line of this little c right here. Now we can look at a similar structure within the powers of 2 and the powers of 3. So let's go ahead and do that. So for the powers of 2, maybe I'll write that as 2 to the a mod 120. In other words, the residues modulo 120 of the powers of 2. And here we're going to let a run bigger than or equal to 0. So notice that this is going to be equal to 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. But now the next power of 2 is 128, but 128 is 8 mod 120. So we're actually done. This is as large as the set needs to be. Okay, good. And I'm going to go ahead and call this set A because um, to go in line with this little A right here. Another thing that I want to notice is that I can exclude the number 1 from A. So let's just go ahead and take that out of there. And that's because we know 3 to the B and 5 to the C are both odd, which makes their sum even. We also know that N factorial is going to be even for n bigger than or equal to 5, which means we need 2 to the a also to be even. But all powers of 2 are even except for 2 to the 0, so we can get rid of that one because that will not produce a solution by that kind of simple um, parity argument. Now let's go ahead and look at this. So 3 to the b mod 120 for non-negative integers b. So here we're going to get 1, 3, 9, 27, 81, 
Then the next power of three is 243, but notice 243 is three more than 240. 240 is twice 120, so that means we can stop here. And I'll go ahead and write this as B. Good. Now the next thing that I wanna notice is that if I let this equation be star, a solution to this equation, so a solution to star, maybe blue star, will give rise to a solution to the following, x plus y plus z is congruent to zero mod 120, where x is in A, Y is in B, or Z and Z is in C, I should say. That's because X is gonna be a power of two, Y is gonna be a power of three, and Z is gonna be a power of five. Good, but notice that's gonna give us six possible solutions to the following equivalent congruence. Notice that this is equivalent to x plus y is congruent to, sorry, y plus z is congruent to negative x mod 120. Good. So, like I said, this is going to give rise to a solution to the following. So, a solution to one of, so let's see, x sorry, y plus z is congruent to, now we just have to run through all values of negative x mod 120 where x is coming from this set. So negative two is gonna be 118 mod 120. Then y plus z congruent to, let's see, that one's gonna be 116 mod 120. Then let's see what this one's gonna be. That's gonna be 112. So y plus z is congruent to 112 mod 120, then let's see the rest of them. So let's see this 16 right here, that's gonna be y plus z is congruent to 104 mod 120. The next y plus z is congruent to 88 mod 120. And then finally y plus z is congruent to 56 mod 120. Okay, so let's just like look at what we've done so far here. So if we have a solution to this equation when n is bigger than or equal to five, then that's gonna give us a solution to this congruence, x plus y plus z is congruent to zero mod 20, 120, where x comes from this set A, y from this set B, and z from this set C. But we can break that down into the six possibilities that x can be. So in other words, we've got these six congruences. y plus z is 118, and so on and so forth. But now we can just go ahead and check these one at a time and see that none of these have a solution. So let's say that. So none have a solution. And since none of those have a solution, then that means there was no solution up here to our original setup when n was bigger than or equal to five. And that's a good place to stop.